Number eight is 2002's Swept Away, an irksome, misogynistic film. The ultimate cry for help from Guy Ritchie. The man's direction flounders in this movie harder than a fish out of water, and the acting comes off as mean and irritating. The film wants us to keep siding with either the male or female character while they're on this island, but when both characters are grating beyond all belief, we don't care about these guys. And by trapping us on that deserted island with them, well, it makes us want to throw the DVD copy of this movie into the ocean. Number seven is 2007's Kablooey. This is the ultimate example of why quirky independent cinema gets a bad rep. The lead character, who is also the director to this train wreck, well, he's a misunderstood loner in this movie. But then he gets a job as a blue alien-like mascot. He hands out pamphlets in the middle of nowhere. People stop and are entranced with him because, well, he's big and blue. People start to understand him because he's big and blue. Kids love him and think he's a superhero. Why? Well, because he's big and blue. There's not enough here to support a feature film. There's not even enough here to support a two-minute short. I mean, it's flimsy, weak, not funny, and just flat-out terrible. Number six is 2003's Marcy X. A hateful movie about the world of music featuring a romance between Lisa Kudrow and Damon Wayans. Wow, two people I never needed or wanted to see kiss. The movie relies on stereotypes for jokes and material. The fake songs aren't anything new. It moves at a snail's pace, and it's just one big ball of forgetful mush. Number five is 2006's Dougal, the biggest middle finger to children I've ever encountered. The movie isn't filled with jokes, just references, not even well-thought-out references. By saying titles of movies or characters from other movies or TV shows, the movie thinks it's made a joke. It expects kids are gonna laugh at Characters saying titles like Pirates of the Caribbean or Tomb Raider and nothing else. I didn't know they were shooting Ice Age 2 up in here. To my understanding, this is an un-Americanized version of the original UK version, The Magic Roundabout. By making this Americanized, the original voice cast is now dubbed over by American actors. Now this is a big problem because now the voices don't even match the animated characters' mouths. That and the animation looks so incredibly cheap by today's standards. It's like they're not even trying. Look, I know kids will watch anything, but I mean, this is ridiculous. Number four is 2008's Meet the Spartans, another chapter in the Friedberg and Seltzer filmography of garbage. This time they're back and it's really worse. Instead of focusing on fat jokes like they did in Date Movie, this time they're back with unnecessary, borderline offensive, homophobic jokes that are far from being funny. The movie is barely a movie itself. I mean, with its short runtime and thin script, the movie takes time to spoof commercials and perform humdrum dance sequences. I mean, top lame celebrity impressions on top and cast members from Mad TV, and, well, you have a recipe for a dreadful memory. Number three is 2008's Fireproof, a vile movie-going experience about Kirk Cameron trying to save his marriage by following a book entitled The Love Dare that pretty much God provided the foreword for, and it leads him on a 40-day experiment with following steps in this book. Look, you can believe any religion you want, but when a movie tells me that I should pray and read a book that provides steps to make a relationship better instead of talking stuff over with my significant other to fix things, you know what, I find that to be baloney and it offends me. Everything about this movie screams phony, and it isn't enjoyable in the least. It attempts at drama are sappy, and the attempts at humor are just really stupid, including a scene where Kirk Cameron must overcome his porn addiction by smashing his computer. Ugh. Number two is 2007's Norbit, a giant festering ball of offensive and lame. The movie doesn't make sense to me. Eddie Murphy made a movie a while back called The Nutty Professor that pretty much said, you know what, fat jokes can be hurtful. So when he goes back on that and makes a movie that's based on fat jokes, you know, it makes things very questionable. Uh, you know, add another movie to the list of movies that aren't funny on my list. It's tedious and it drags. It's not funny seeing our supposedly hero be belittled in almost every scene and how can I root for someone who is such a sad sack, an annoying sad sack at that. I mean, I don't know what offends me more, the stereotypes in this movie or the fact that this was nominated for an Oscar. And the number one worst movie of the past 10 years, by far, 
is 2008's Expelled No Intelligence Allowed. I don't know if I'm for the idea of intelligent design or against it. I just know what makes a good, interesting movie, and this is the opposite of everything on that list of mine. Ben Stein narrates in his monotone voice for what feels like days using unstable arguments which don't involve the audience at all, while director Nathan Frankowski uses tricky editing and makes use of the worst cinematography I've seen in quite some time. Not only is the film technically lacking, but the film outright lies to its audience. There was a website actually called Expelled Exposed where it went and exposed lies the movie makes. There are videos online that provide a commentary providing insight that Stein neglects to fill us in on. However, the filmmakers never address any of this, and it kept on playing in theaters and kept making money. Also, the movie uses music that can easily be found by accessing your Apple GarageBand library, and ugh, that's a big pet peeve of mine. Make your own music, it's not hard. For the most part, though, we get Stein walking, observing landmarks or locations, looking lost. He does the odd interview, but then he starts walking again and narrating and doing nothing. Expelled, no intelligence allowed, is one of the worst things I've ever seen in my life, and is most definitely the worst movie of the past 10 years. <sighs> so there you have it. Those are the worst films of the past 10 years. Let's put those aside, never worry about them again. And here's to the next 10 years, where hopefully we don't uh, incorporate garbage with our life again. I don't know if that even makes sense anyways. Uh, look, if you want to read any of my stuff, uh, reviews, or articles, you can read it at wileywrites.wordpress.com. Thank you for watching my video, and um, feedback is always appreciated. Thanks.